And now, let's talk about sex. Yesterday, I came across this website, Make Love Not Porn, because of a Cindy Gallup TED Talk, which is a wonderful presentation in which she says, uh, and, and uh, I'm not supposed to suggest an age for her, especially in this context, I'll be polite, but an older woman who begins her TED Talk by saying, I date younger men. And when I date younger men, I have sex with younger men. And she's talking about men in their 20s and complaining about this problem, how because we have become uh, still, or we still are a rather sexually repressed society. And in many ways, th this has great connections to statism as, as the government wants you to feel isolated and alone or, or to deny your, your individual will in whatever way, that, that we become uh, repressed. And, and in many ways, you know, shrink and hide from the, the basic realities of human existence. And one of the ways that we see this manifest is sexual education or, or the general lack thereof. Or if you want to say the way that technology is changing it, the fact now that for most kids, and I don't need to tell you all the ridiculous statistics about how many 10 year olds, was it 90% of 10 year olds have seen porn on the internet? I mean, yeah, <laughs> kids. <laughs> kids these days with access to the internet. I mean, for me, I'm 31. I consider myself part of the millennial generation, at least on the, the, the older edge. I saw porn on the internet when I was a kid. You know, I don't think I made it to 10. I was a virgin until I was 19. So maybe I was just a little bit behind the curve. But you know, those numbers are coming down. And the reality now is that for most kids, their greatest sexual education is from the internet and largely from porn. And what 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 this woman was was particularly complaining about, Cindy Gallup, was that the twenty year old men and and why would a woman of her age complain about having sex with twenty year old men, right? But to be fair, she has a legitimate complaint here that when that source of education is porn as opposed to some form of healthy sexual education, which really, you know, should be something that, and you want to talk about the oppression or the, the general suppression in society, it's something that, that parents should have a hand in, really. Uh, of course, yeah, it's really easy to blame the parents, but part of the suppression is, oh, well, government says we don't have to talk to our kids about sex. They'll get that in school from sex ed. Yeah, and you want to trust the government with, yeah, yeah, good luck with that. No wonder we have so many uh, twisted people and, and um, well, I, I won't get into that larger commentary that you could take from that. But let, let's just uh, admit the reality here that most parents don't have any hand in it and that the Internet is the largest uh, educator for porn for kids. And so she was complaining that these 20-year-old something men would uh, be, instead of making love to her, would be making porn with her. And so they, they, this website that she was launching, Make Love Not Porn, has, you know, and it's, it's really not that much to it except for the make love not porn TV, which we'll get to in a second. But the basic premise is there are porn world versus real world perceptions of sex. And the first one here is porn world. Men love coming on women's faces and women love having men come on their faces. Real world. Some women like this, some women don't. Some guys like to do this, some guys don't. Entirely up to personal choice. Now, that's it's kind of like obvious, right? If there's this sort of homogenization or this sort of like, you know, archetype that comes out of porn of the facial money shot at the end of every scene, then yeah, some guys are going to get the wrong impression. But that's kind of an obvious one. I was thinking, I was hoping I would learn more from this website, having been probably unduly influenced by porn myself. But uh, the next ones are, I mean, are similar. Porn world, women have no hair down there. Real world. And by the way, most men know this, but if it creates an expectation, if the men want it, they're going to want it. Some women shave, some women don't. Some men actively prefer women to keep their hair. If you do shave, it requires constant maintenance, which can be a pain in the dot, 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 entirely up to personal choice. So you think now it's just, it's just coming from like the homogenization effect of media to the individualization of the real world, right? But especially now with the internet, porn comes in every flavor imaginable. Porn world. Women come all the time in positions where nothing is going on anywhere near the clit. Now here you get to a real obvious woman's complaint, right? Real world. There has to be some sort of rhythmic pressure on the clit in just the right way to make a woman come. Can be pubic bone, tongue, fingers, something else entirely, but it has to be there. Now actually, I. And correct me if I'm wrong, I, shouldn't, I don't know if I should be questioning this website, but I, I do believe that's incorrect, that there are some women that can come from just vaginal stimulation, but certainly uh, an obvious misrepresentation in the porn world. 
Porn world, all women love anal sex. I don't know if you'd get to that conclusion, but um, real world, a lot of women are into the idea. Some women love it. Some women don't. Some guys want to do it. Some guys don't fancy the idea much. I'm not really, no. Um, porn world, you know, and then it, it gets into, now this is, well, this is more interesting. And this is where I think the, the real crux of this is, is coming in, where we get to the larger uh, issues of, of how humans are evolving sexually porn world it's all about the positions and fucking for the camera angles which means that often the only bits of human bodies touching each other are the genitals now this is something that for me is like really obvious you know when when i'm having sex um i'm not posing for the camera you know but when i'm watching porn i want to see as much of the woman as i can it's obvious difference right as opposed to the the actual, anyways, I'll let, uh, I'll let the website speak for me here. One of the many great things about sex is the sheer pleasure of skin on skin. It feels great to fuck with your arms around each other, your bodies pressed right up against each other. Not so much of that is going on in porn because it gets in the way of the camera focusing right up close on the point of entry. Now, um, there's, there's one about saliva and there's one about, you know, how you turn women on. And so maybe, maybe it's like ramping up to these, um, you know, things that women are more concerned with, like this one, porn world. Women love being made to gag during blowjobs by having their heads grabbed and a man's cock shoved forcibly right down their throats. No, you, and, and it doesn't take a whole lot of figuring, thinking to figure out that that's not the real case. In fact, you only have to screw it up once to find out that that's not a good way to get a blowjob. But Porn world, this is the way sex is. Real world, not necessarily, is how the slideshow ends here. And that's really it for the core of the website. But then there's this whole other thing for which I have not adequately done my research for presenting this story, and it's makelovenotporn.tv. Mainly because I'm too embarrassed to ever spend money for porn on the internet. I mean, too tech-savvy to ever have to spend money for porn on the internet. But this is one where I'd actually support It's a really clever model, and, and I don't know if I'm really uh, going to bother to get into this, but the the quote here from Kevin, MLNP.TV member since 2012, watching porn makes me want to jerk off, watching your videos makes me want to have sex. Now, the reason, you know, why why is porn necessary? Why is prostitution necessary? And and that's why I want to connect this to these two larger stories. Uh, maybe, maybe who knows, maybe, maybe makelovenotporn.com is the larger story. But from Beijing, from the Associated Press, China asks if happy ending services are illegal. And this is a really big deal for China. China's law enforcers are having an unusually public debate about a delicate topic. Do paid sexual services known as happy endings at massage parlors count as crimes if they don't involve actual sexual intercourse? While prostitution is illegal in China, its boundaries are being discussed with rare candor by courts, police, and state media, even the usually stodgy flagship newspaper of the Communist Party. And there's, there's one line in here that, that I really loved about the, the Socialist Party uh, newspaper is normally spending its time lecturing party members about discipline or obscure ideological issues is now discussing hand jobs. So this is a really big deal, and it says, while common in Beijing and many other cities, the services became part of a conspicuous national conversation only this week following newspaper reports about a crackdown that fizzled in southern Guangdong province. Now, a lot of libertarians, when they go, what's the deal with prostitution, will go, well, get the government the fuck out of it. They'll quote George Carlin, right? Well, if selling's legal and fucking's legal, why isn't selling fucking legal? And it's it's pretty obvious that, that, that the government's uh, application of so-called vice laws is just something that exacerbates whatever the real problem is. And if you see the real problem here as sexual repression, then using the government to suppress prostitution isn't going to help things. But if the real problem is sexual repression of some kind or an inability to speak about sexuality or your own sexual desires openly, then prostitution, in a sense, is also part of the problem. And I think a lot of libertarian, especially being a movement dominated by young men, jerking off in their parents' basements, yes, you, uh, well, you know, you, you're going to think, okay, well, if prostitution is legal, the world's going to be better, maybe I'll get some. No, no, I'm sorry, fellas. It's, it's, not the, it's not the answer. The reason prostitution is legal is because we can't find healthy, natural sexual relations in our regular lives. 
And if that was possible, the idea of, you know, and, and there's nothing morally wrong about prostitution, but nobody going to a prostitute goes, you know what? <laughs> well, <laughs> I've got this perfectly loving, sexually satisfying relationship at home, but you know what? You know what's really going to satisfy me? Prostitution. Yeah, that's, no, I mean, think about it for a second. What we should be seeking. Now, now, if there are people that, that for whatever reason, want a, a greater degree of promiscuity or if that's somehow built into the, the, the human genetic code or if it's going to be, you know, who knows? Maybe we'll be able to satisfy that in other ways. Maybe it's going to look like something that's market-based as, you know, as opposed to the, the, well, I would say it's still market-based based on the intangible uh, joys of exchanging or sharing a sexual experience with someone. But th this idea that uh, prostitution is is you know c you know caused by uh, government suppression or or is um, you know a natural thing that uh, is is being suppressed by government is you know uh, certainly a much more complicated idea than this because prostitution wouldn't be necessary in the first place if it wasn't for sexual repression which is the same thing that leads to government suppressing prostitution does that make sense so you've got a problem that leads to, you got you got a disease that leads to two symptoms one of which is attacking the other the symptoms the the the, the disease being sexual repression or the, the the deeper problem the two of the diseases then being prostitution and i don't know maybe people will take issue with me calling prostitution a disease because in some ways it's also a treatment it's also a, a, re a release valve if you will but then you have the problem of government managing sexual relations is another symptom of this. And this is, you know, gay marriage, people who are threatened, you know, and, and, and really the, the reason gays have been so politically prosecutors as politically prosecutors they have is because people actually see this, and, and this has been relatively uh, well demonstrated and, and proven by various psychological studies, is that it's a, a threat. People see it as a threat to their reproductive strategy of, of monogamy, you know, and this especially ties into religion and why religious people are so anti-gay, is that there is a desire to protect one's own reproduction strategy, unsurprisingly. And so this is one of the ways it gets twisted when people are insecure. So we see similarly in Australia for, um, from Moranba, clash over sex worker rights in rural Australia. A lone woman checking into a motel in the Australian mining town of Moranba can expect some blunt questioning from the owners. Are you a working girl? Turning on a heel and storming away indignantly will be taken as an admission of prostitution. Now, because this is the Associated Press, they didn't say turning on a platform transparent heel or something like that. But as Joan Hartley, 67-year-old owner of the Drover's Rest Motel, said, that sort of reaction is really positive proof as far as I'm concerned. Now, it's legal... In, in most places in Australia, legal nationally. Anyways, so the way this came about is that uh, she was suspicious of a regular guest, an attractive woman in her early 40s at her modest cement brick Drover's Rest Motel. The guest claimed to be an interior designer, but cleaners once counted 10 used condoms inside a tied-up translucent plastic garbage bag left in her motel room trash can. And so even in a situation like this, where government makes it more difficult for there to be uh, brothels and, and where there's their regulations saying that you have to be licensed, and uh, in some places you can have no more than two licensed prostitutes working at one particular place, yada, yada, you have this, uh, the, the, this conflict. And the way it came up, and this is such a, like a really distinct, disgusting story on the, on the, from the point of view of the prostitute because she sued the motel under the Queensland State Anti-Discrimination Act, which, which bans discrimination against sex workers. She demanded $30,000 for stress, anxiety, and lost earnings for not being able to perform her business <laughs> as she admitted somehow in someone else's place of business. Now, if you just acknowledge private property, all of these problems go away, obviously, but um, this is part of the uh, the issue coming with a, a mining industry in Australia where there's some towns where you have migrant mining populations that uh, double the population of the town without them. And a lot of it they describe as FIFO, fly in, fly out. And then there are fly in, fly out prostitutes for all of these well-paid mine workers. 
So the money's pretty good. Uh, at Club 7, manager Warwick Bumstead said all but one of the 60 sex workers are FIFO working four to ten day stints before flying home to distant cities. He said a typical mattress actress at his brothel makes between $5,000 and $9,000. That's Australian per week. And uh, the Australian dollar is uh, just ever so slightly weaker than the U.S. dollar. So that's that's a lot of money. It's a lot of money to be made taking care of the miners there. But what are the uh, you know the, the broader implications we see in the United States? Prostitution still generally illegal, except in 12 counties in Nevada, where eight of them actually have uh, brothels that are operating still under heavy government uh, regulation and not able to actually serve the needs of the market. But perhaps if the market were allowed to reflect the actual state of human sexuality today and you didn't have government in the way, we could get along with this process of actually evolving to a more sexually healthy state as a species where we can be open about these things and we can go from, you know, having sexuality in America defined by well, I don't want to say defined by, but well, largely influenced by internet porn and then you end up with a, a, a suppressed prostitution industry and make no mistake about it it is still a huge industry in the United States, despite being illegal everywhere. I mean, if nothing else, this should be a great indicator of our hypocrisy as a society towards sex, and that you have escort services all over the place. You have massage parlors that give happy endings, not just in China, but all over the United States. It's not a unique problem. If anything, the Chinese are putting the United States to shame by being more open about the conversation, at least at this particular point. And who knows? I'm not trying to make a comparison between the arbitrarily collectivized victims of state authority in various regions of the world by falling under certain governments. Is Are the Chinese more sexually repressed than the Americans? Who gives a fuck? But obviously we're at a unique point in human history where we are on the verge of so many great ways in which technology is empowering us to be sexually healthy and yet government is holding us back. And I know. I wish I could go on and on about uh, that story, but my endurance has its limits. The dollar as the reserve currency of the world is certainly being challenged. Making a practical decision to move a portion of their business into mountain hours, it makes a lot of sense. So one Bitcoin can be divided between 100 million people.